what I was demonstrating there is how when you're soloing in a bebop style, playing predominantly a line of eighth notes, you can enhance that line by putting 16th note turns on the chord notes. So this is usually done in when you're playing a descending bebop scale. Let's just recap on a C7 chord, a descending bebop scale would be this one. It's basically a mixolydian mode with one added passing note. The B comes between the root and the seventh. And the reason that added passing note is there is so that if you start a line on a downbeat on a chord note, it doesn't matter which direction the scale goes, you will always play chord notes on the downbeat and that leads to a smooth line. So on, in the first example, I started off with a descending uh, bebop scale. And then I put a 16th note turn on the C, the, the root note. So you play the C, then you go one step above, come back to the C, then to the B. And that way you maintain this line of, of chord notes falling on the downbeats. So um, it's worth just looking at what else I did in that first example. That's a bebop cliche that I've talked about before. I'm aiming for the third of C7 and I'm circling around it. I'm playing the note above it, the note below it, and then a chromatic passing note going back up, taking me to the third. At the beginning of the next bar, I put two extra chromatic notes in to the bebop scale. And again, that's a bit of a cliche that's that's very often done. When you're going from the third down to the seventh, put two chromatic passing notes. The end of the phrase was a, clashy, a classic bebop ending. It's, it's a cliche, but it's one you really need to put in your playing to make it sound like an authentic bebop phrase. So it was just... Notice the rhythm of it, you're ending on an upbeat and you don't keep the note down, you accent it and snatch your finger or your thumb away from it. So in the second example, I started off with a descending bebop scale, but this time starting on the third and then I put a, a 16th note turning on the third. Just putting these turns in the odd place, it enhances it, makes it a little bit more interesting. Again, it's worth just looking at what I did after that. When I landed on the B flat, the seventh of C7, I then played an arpeggio going up. Now, if you look at the arpeggio itself, it's actually a B flat major seventh arpeggio. The F is the suspended fourth of the C7 chord. And again, that is a, a cliche that's done an awful lot. So you very often find when, when you're listening to uh, be what played like Charlie Parker or Dizzy Gillespie, that they, they start a line coming down a bebop scale. And then when they get to the seventh of a dominant seventh chord, they do that arpeggio taking you back up. Uh, at the end of that second example, I did this for the ending. Now that really is the same ending as in the first example, but with the D displaced an octave. And again, that's something else I've talked about in previous videos in it. Displacing a note by an octave can make it very interesting. So, okay. Now in the third example, I started off with the ascending arpeggio on B flat. Did that same turn, uh, circling around the E rather. Another arpeggio, this time starting on the third of the chord, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and then back with that first bebop ending. 
And then I put the turn on the fifth of the chord, so... In the fourth example, I put the turn on the seventh, the B-flat. In the original version, I started off with a full octave of a descending bebop scale, but starting on the third. And then the second time, I put the turn in on the seventh. And then I finished it off with just a slightly modified bebop ending. So, the turns go on the chord notes. In the next video, I'm going to talk about putting triplets in, but this time on the non-chord notes. I hope you found this useful. If you did and you haven't done so so far, I'd be grateful if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I always welcome any comments or questions. Thank you and see you in the next video.